بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما Okay the next thing we'll talk about the dynamic net we'll see the configuration of the dynamic net and again the prerequisite of this lab is again the same thing what i did is i just removed the net configurations of the static net what we did in our previous lab so if you verify show run as well you don't see any translations so i also removed the net inside outside commands based on the previous lab so we will be removing the static nat and then we'll be reconfiguring the same requirement with the dynamic nat like here the requirement is like if you remember we discussed the dynamic nat allows you to translate one to one mapping but this one for one to one mapping is done dynamically so only thing we need to define is we need to define the range of private ip address like in my example i i have a complete subnet let's say 192.168.1. subnet and assume there are around let's say 200 addresses 200 ips or 200 users and this all should get translated to any ip within this range let's say 5111 to 50.1.1.255 dot dot range so of course zero and the last one it will not be used so up to 254 these are the addresses should be used so it's not possible to define that many addresses so what we'll be doing is we just uh, tell to select the dynamically from this range of private addresses to this range of public addresses we want to translate now configuration wise we need to define the configuration goes in three steps the first step we need to define what is your private ip range probably will be defining that and in the second step we'll be defining what is the public ip range and then finally we are going to map the private ip to public ip so three step configuration So let's come with the first step. So in the first step, we need to define the private IP range, and the private IP range we will be defining with the help of uh, ACL standard ACL. So what we need to do is we need to use a standard ACL, and then we need to use any ACL number in between one to ninety nine, and then we need to say permit permit in the sense here we want to translate. So whatever the networks which are matching the permit statement, because I'll be using this ACL in the NAT. Like if you remember, we have we have discussed the ACL section. ACL is going to set a set of rules which is going to match the traffic, and depending upon that match, I can use them to either permit or deny when the traffic is moving through the interface. Like when you apply on F zero by zero interface, it will either deny or permit the traffic as it goes through that interface. So I can also use an ACL in the NAT. It's going to say that when I use them in the NAT, it's going to define. Uh, whether you want to translate or not so whatever the networks matching the permit statement will translate uh, them and whatever defined in the deny it will not translate so so depending upon the acl where we are using so we'll be using acls in many other uh, scenarios like in the route filtering in the bgp options so here we'll be using the acl and this acl 55 represents or match my complete 192.168.1. subnet so when i'm writing 192.168.1.0 with this wildcard mask means it's going to permit or match all the networks which ever starts with 192.168.1 and the statement permit says that we need to translate all the addresses which are starting with 192.168.1 so let's say if you have more networks let's say you can if you have more networks you can write another statement saying that 192.168.2.0 with a wildcard mask of 000255 okay so you can add multiple networks but make sure that you are using the same acl number uh, in general so the first step we need to define the private ip range and that is done with the help of an acl now the next thing is we need to define the public ip range Now in this public IP range, uh, to define that, this is how the syntax goes. So we have to say IP NAT pool, any some name for the pool. Let's say public IP, some uh, some name, and then we need to define what is the starting uh, public IP, because typically the range uh, when you select the range or get the public IP range from the service border, it will be in the form of subnets. So basically, it will be. a uh, continuation in the in a specific range based on subnetting 
So in my example, let's say the starting public IP is 50.1.1.1. And let's say the ending public IP, we need to specify, let's say 50.1.1.254 or 200, whatever the, uh, let's say I'm using up to 200 here. So we can use any of this range. And then we need to say net mask. Net mask is a part of the command. And the subnet mask, if I'm using slash 24, I have to say 255.255.255.0. Now, depending upon the subnet, what you get, you will get the slash value or the subnet mask. You need to specify that uh, after the net mask command. So the same thing here, I'm using the pool name as CCNA here. And then I'm defining the starting public IP and then the ending public IP and then the subnet mask depending upon the network uh, range what I'm using here. Now the last thing is we need to map, do the mapping. So the third step is we need to do mapping. So in the mapping we need to map this private address range which means the ACL number should be mapped with this one. So we need to say that, okay, if any network comes within this private IP range, within this ACL, uh, that should get translated with the public IP, whatever is defined inside the pool. <clears throat> so we do this way. We need to say IP NAT inside source list. And then the ACL number. ACL number, you need to specify whatever you're using. If you're using named ACL, we can use name as well. And then the pool name, whatever the pool name I have used here. So in my example, I have used the pool name as CCNA. So we need to say IP NAT inside source list. List means ACL access list. That's what we are going to say. And then we need to say pool and the name of the pool here. Okay, so it's a complete three line configuration. So the first step, we need to define the private IP range. In the second step, we need to define the uh, public IP pool. And in the third line, we need to do mapping of the private IP to the public IP address, whatever it defined. And then the implementation is still the same. So the implementation as we did in the static NAT, we need to define from where you get your private IPs and the interface, and this is going to be inside, mostly the interface facing towards the LAN from where you get all the private IPs sourced. And the interface which is connecting to the service portal will be my outside interface. So if you define the wrong direction, again, that's not going to work. So make sure that you are defining the correct uh, directions or the correct NAT configurations on a specific interfaces. Okay, so this is a configuration overview here. Now the next thing, we'll, we'll go and configure this. Again, the prerequisite, the same as we did for the static NAT. So make sure that we do have an IP address thing configured here. And also we do have a routing already we have seen that prerequisite so the same prerequisite so i have already removed the static routing what i have did uh, what i did in the previous uh, topics okay so there is no nat configured right now so it's been removed okay so let's let's go and configure as per this so i'm going to write an access list uh, you can also use named acl so if you want to use ip access list standard let's say the named acl is private IP and then we can say permit 192.168.1.subnet and then the wildcard mask okay and then the next step is we need to define the public IP range right that's what we have seen here so I'm going to specify the public IP range IP NAT pool and any name for the pool let's say the name of the pool is pub IP let's say and the starting public IP is 5111 and the ending public IP I'm using let's say 500 so you can also always use question mark and the net mask and the submit mask whatever the range and then finally we need to map these two addresses and further we need to say IP NAT inside source list and the list either I can use the name of the number of the ACL or the name so here I have used the name, so I'll be using this, the same private IP, and that should get translated to pool, and what is the name of the pool? And the name of the pool is this one, public IP, done. Now once we do this configuration, the final step is we need to go to the 
a zero by zero interface. It's an IP NAT inside and S0 by 0 by interface. It's my outside according to my diagram inside and outside interfaces.